it's also called as uh, basal cell epithelioma rodent ulcer basalioma fibroepithelioma of uh, pinkus so it is having different kind of a nomenclature most commonly we term it as rodent ulcer due to its slow creeping growth into the surrounding structures that gives is a name that confers is the name of rodent ulcer so it is likely to have a slow growth and really it metastasizes to distant site but local invasion is the most characteristic feature so uh, it is very commonly seen in sun exposed individuals sun exposed sites in lightly uh, skinned individual or lightly pigmented individu uh, individuals fair skinned individuals it is extremely common especially in sun exposed areas incidence of uh, bcc rises in people with genetic syndrome such as xeroderma pigmentosum coming to the pathogenesis of uh, bcc large number of genetic mutations genetic abnormalities have been reported mutation of uh, you know, this atm gene that is known to cause ataxia telangiectasia that has been associated with bcc uh, apart from that mutation of xpa gene that is associated with a uh, defective uh, genetic repair and that leads to xeroderma pigmentosum has also been associated with bcc apart from that mutation of ptch gene has also been associated and here multiple basal cell cancers can arise uh, in uh, in association with nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome apart from that it can arise from uh, neva sebaceous a congenital a very common congenital hematomatous lesion of the skin present from the uh, childhood a kind of a congenital lesion that may often progress to basal cell carcinoma later on it is also having some association with smoking and immunosuppression also facilitates the development of basal cell cancer coming to the nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome also known as gorlin syndrome is an autosomal dominant disorder there are multiple basal cell carcinoma syndromes are seen basal multiple basal cell carcinoma lesions are seen before the age of 20 and often accompanied with various other visceral cancers like medulloblastoma and also ovarian fibroma may be seen apart from that uh, there may be some uh, congenital abnormalities like uh, cleft lip and palate intracranial calcification may be seen and there are other rib abnormalities vertebral abnormalities that also may be seen in many of the patients of this particular nevoid basal cell cancer syndrome so you what you need to remember is multiple basal cell carcinomas before the age of 20 and uh, very commonly we get medulloblastoma cns tumor and an ovarian tumor benign ovarian tumor that is ovarian fibroma so you please try to remember these important facts clinical features it presents as poly papules and uh, the important fact is that the poly papules or sometimes macule they contain uh, the prominent dilated subepidermal blood vessel so they have a prominent dilated subepidermal blood vessel that is characteristically seen so this is the nodular variant and sometimes superficial variant also seen where it can uh, present as a macules or superficial patches without any nodule they can just present as macule or patch that that is called a superficial variant and uh, the, these are the nodular variant containing nodules and sometimes they may, there may be cyst formation when it is known as nodulocystic appearance most common site overall is the head and neck region any area of head and neck that may be predisposed and uh, other rare areas include anogenital region nail nail and uh, nail bed uh, palms and soles also can be afflicted with basal cell cancers in rare cases some of the tumors they contain melanin pigment so they may resemble clinically to that of melanocytic nevi or melanomas so because of the slow growth ulceration local invasion into the bone or facial sinuses they are often termed as rodent ulcer and some tumors are uh, erythematous and uh, sometimes because of extensive pigment as we discussed it can uh, mimic that of malignant melanoma so here is uh, the poly papule and you can see the um, prominent blood vessels that is quite characteristic of are uh, this uh, polypapules of basal cell cancer or basal cell carcinoma coming to the morphology again that is highly characteristic that is usually there in the vignette and that is extremely important uh, for you to remember so uh, it presents as it can present as multifocal growth originating from epidermis 
and uh, it can extend uh, to several square centimeter that is these are these are known as multifocal growth or superficial pattern but the nodular pattern that is very characteristic thing is the downward growth of cords and islands of basophilic cells that uh, is still connected to the overlying epidermis but it projects downwards into the dermis and the cells are you can see they are quite uh, basophilic uh, usually around to uh, oval in shape um, in the center of the nest but as we go towards the periphery uh, they are quite uh, columnar arrange uh, columnar in shape and they are arranged parallelly to each other you can see the parallel arrangement of the tumor cells relative to each other so this is known as palisading arrangement and it is quite characteristic and you can see some it, some uh, large number of mitoses are also evident over here and another characteristic feature as you can see over here is the retraction artifact so uh, there is secretion of some uh, mucin uh, material basophilic mucin or hyaluronic acid that is also sometimes visible uh, and uh, that is believed to be secreted by the fibroblast around uh, the tumor there is a desmoplastic reaction so the fibroblast around uh, the basophilic islands they are known to secrete hyaluronic acid so what happens is that during tissue processing uh, due to the presence of these substances the tumor uh, uh, tends to uh, retract or tumor tends to separate from the stroma so a kind of artificial cleft is uh, being formed and this artificial separation cleft is an important uh, factor in the differential diagnosis uh, of the basal cell carcinoma from various other lesions in which the similar kind of basal cell proliferation may occur so when we say basal cell proliferation means they are small uh, round to oval and quite basaloid in appearance usually having prominent nucleoli and uh, very scant cytoplasm that is the characteristic of basal cell carcinoma so uh, the common differential of basal cell carcinoma morphological difference are trichoepithelioma trichoblastoma and sometimes spilometricoma adenoid uh, cystic carcinoma and, uh, and the basaloid variant of squamous cell carcinoma so there are a large number of differentials but the most important features that differentiates basal cell carcinoma from other types of uh, basal uh, basaloid uh, lesions are palisading arrangement and the retraction artifact these two are the clear cut distinguishing factor features of basal cell carcinoma from other lesions now coming to the immuno staining that is also helpful in differentiating bcc from other lesions there is diffuse staining of bcl2 that is characteristic cd10 is positive p53 p56 p63 are positive and also uh, cytokeratin is positive in basal cell carcinoma coming to the treatment part surgery is uh, usually indicated and apart from that curettage and uh, electro desiccation may be uh, indicated for tumors with the lower risk of uh, lower local recurrence with small tumors uh, we may undergo uh, this curettage and electro desiccation apart from that radiation therapy photodynamic therapy topical treatment with 5 fluorouracil all these are indicated so there is there is uh, basically the multimodal therapy that is in use and some typical forms are indicated uh, based on the case details they are being indicated so usually a multimodal therapy is the treatment of choice in case of basal cell cancer so now let's discuss a case discussion that will summarize all the facts that we have studied so far so 60 year old uh, former lifeguard presents with several small polynodules on the back of her neck biopsy of the nodules reveals birds of atypical deeply basophilic keratinocytes extending from overlying epidermis into the papillary dermis what is the likely diagnosis so you can see the important features include 60 year old lifeguards so former lifeguard means they is having constant uh, exposure of uh, the sun so uh, that is a high risk individual and presents with polynodules on the back of the neck again a very uh, common area for basal cell cancer plus the biopsy is showing birds of atypical deeply basophilic keratinocyte and that extends from the overlying epidermis so it is still attached to the epidermis and it is projecting into the, uh, the upper dermis so its nest of basaloid cells that is projecting from the basal layer of epidermis into the papillary dermis 
and there is 60 year with poly nodules grossly all these are features are in keeping with the diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma so we come to the conclusion of basal cell carcinoma so let's have a quick recapitulation of the facts basal cell carcinoma or basal cell cancer is a common invasive cancer it is very commonly associated uh, with xeroderma pigmentosum it is also associated with p53 mutation ptch mutation it can be associated with nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome and where you may see multiple basal cell uh, carcinomas it is uh, morphologically diagnosed by presence of uh, nest of basally nest of uh, basophilic keratinocytes that project downward into the dermis and while it is still attached to the overlying epidermis plus there is retraction artifact palisading arrangement these are the classical feature uh, two most common clinical type is uh, the superficial multifocal ones which present as a uh, macule or patches and that uh, grow over superficial portion of the skin the nodular or nodular cystic variant that usually grows uh, deeper into the dermis and present as a polynodule uh, with a arborizing or a branching blood vessel that is quite prominent over that nodule so these two are the common forms so that's all for this presentation hope you had a hope you all had a nice learning and you learned all the important facts it is advisable to uh, repeat this video for better learning and recapitulate the important facts and please don't forget to give your valuable comments which are highly encouraging and motivating and also stay associated with the channel subscribe to the channel and uh, be connected for lots of learning ahead thank you all